I'm Doreen Yu. I'm associate editor of the Philippine Star. I'm very happy in the place I'm in now as a Chinoy, as a Pinoy. Um, and I am, I've lived long enough that if anybody challenges what I am or um, tries to belittle what I am, I know enough to fight back and I know I will win because whatever prejudices they may have, I know I can counter. Um, whatever they, they decide to, to say about my being a Chinese, my being, you know, Chinoy, neither here nor there, uh, everything, all of that, I, I stand on solid ground and I, I can answer any one of them. Be sure and catch Chinese by Blood, Filipino by Heart, presented by Chinoy TV. Hi, I'm Janina Chan. I'm a TV host. I'm a podcaster, a columnist, and a content creator. Okay, so for our family, it's kind of like a mix of both traditional and modern. But in terms of upbringing, in terms of how we were raised, me and my sister, by our parents, I think um, it is similar to most families here in the Philippines. You know, we're both um, very family-oriented. Um, I am a part of a very supportive family, so I'm also grateful that, especially my mom, she's always been supportive ever since I was um, a baby girl. <laughs> Literally started young. And I'm so grateful for um, my family's encouragement and support um, in what I do. Being part of the One Chinoy campaign is definitely such an honor and also a responsibility. <laughs> I am so happy to be here to be able to reflect as well on my identity and I feel more realigned to myself by doing so too. It's definitely been fun and I love knowing more about where I belong. I'm grateful for where I'm going. Onwards, together as One Chinoy community. I'm inviting all of you to watch Chinoy TV Presents Chinese by Blood, Filipino by Heart. Hello, I am Nicole Cordobes and I was Miss Chinatown 2014 and Binibining Pilipinas Grand International 2016. I think the biggest misconception is that we are like we keep to ourselves. Uh, we don't really, we're not so emotional because growing up in a Chinese family, we don't really say like we don't state our feelings. We don't show our emotions. We're not touchy at all, <laughs> and our parents don't even give us encouragement. Not that it's not entirely a bad thing, but more of they want us to stay humble. I'm really honored to be part of One Chinoy because I feel like we need to tell our story more. We need to open up a conversation more. And I know that and dami nating Chinoy community members na nagahanap ng kausap, nagahanap ng mahuhugutan ng advice. So we need to be more present. We need to be more visible. And I'm inviting you guys to watch Chinoy TV Presents Chinese by Blood, Filipino by Heart. I'm Patricia Ngo, and I'm a children's book writer here in the Philippines. Growing up, I didn't see a lot of representation of Chinois, and I think that's why I wasn't really that sure about what it meant to be Chinois. And 
Eventually, when I reached college, I learned about how culture isn't a pure and static thing. Cultures keep changing just as people do, and the Chinoy culture is just one way in which cultures kept changing. And I learned that there wasn't just one way of being Filipino. There were many ways to do so, and being Chinoy was a valid way of being Filipino. I think that this campaign is really important in helping bridge the gap between whatever miscommunications we might have with other cultures and other people. Uh, there are times when people misunderstand what it means to be Chinoy. They don't understand sometimes that the Philippines is still our home and that we are still Filipinos even with our different experiences. And I appreciate that this campaign helps bridge that gap and to clarify those misconceptions that people have. I'm inviting you to watch Chinoy TV Presents, Chinese by Blood, Filipino by Heart. Hi, I'm Rob Jam. I'm an illustrator, comic book creator, um, art director, and friend. Well, I just wanted to make comics as a kid. I didn't know it could be a career. Um, I think even if you are from a Filipino family, if, they, if you tell them you want to be an artist, they're kind of afraid of it. Um, because, yeah, there is such a misconception of how you can make money in art. I know that the Filipino Chinese community or the Chinese community, it's so focused on what's sure to be a successful career path or a successful business or a successful whatever, and then art is such a thing outside of that. I feel very honored to be part of this because, um, yeah, I knew I was always a part of this community, but I've never really felt, like, recognition from it or that anyone in the Chinese Filipino community or Filipino Chinese community cared because, yeah, like, there's that whole expectation that they don't know much about art or they see art as just, well, waste of time, that kind of thing. And I'm inviting you to watch Chinoy TV Presents, Chinese by Blood, Filipino by Heart. My name is Stan C. I'm a radio DJ, a podcaster, a voice talent, an events host, and a writer. All things that you're not expected to be when you're Chinoy. I grew up in a traditional, stereotypical Chinese-Filipino household. So my dad is uh, pure Chinese born in the Philippines. And my mom is, uh, is literal na mestiza because my maternal grandmother uh, was Bisaya. She, uh, she came from Leyte. And the maternal grandfather, ko, who I never met, was an immigrant from China. So I really got it all in the sense that I'm Chinese Filipino ako, and I, I can't just be one without the other. I feel privileged to be part of the One Chinoy campaign because I want to be the voice that starts these uncomfortable conversations. And it's high time that they happen because we have to look at who we are to understand where we come from. And that's a conversation that's long overdue. It's time to shock the system. And I'm inviting you to watch Chinoy TV Presents Chinese by Blood, Filipino by Heart. Hi, my name is Tim Yap. I'm a host and eventologist. I'm proud to be Chinoy because I know I come from a bloodline of hard work. Uh, I come from a, a place where tough love was the norm, where we always had to work hard to get to where we are. Uh, it was always one step at a time. Nothing was given to us on a silver platter. Thank you.
I love being part of this One Chinoy campaign because uh, it reminds us that we are one, right? That we are in a world that's becoming so tribal and, uh, you know, into each other's, only into each other's. Uh, we need uh, reminders that, hey, we are all one and the same. And I'm inviting you to watch Chinoy TV Presents Chinese by Blood, Filipino by Heart. Uh, I'm Wilson Lee Flores. I'm in the real estate business. Also, my hobby is writing a column in Philippine Star. I also own a bakery in Quezon City. I have Chinese and I have Filipino culture. That's 100% Filipino, 100% Chinese. So I'm 200% of, of a person. I'm 200% richer as a person. It's not like... Um, yeah, there's no need to balance. I have to continuously learn to be both. Every single culture that enriches us is important. We should always analyze ourselves in order to be better human beings. And our uh, ethnic Chinese minority in the Philippines, uh, non-stop changes, we are experiencing non-stop changes every generation. We should be better. We should always strive to be better. Uh, by uh, cherishing our heritage and our values, learning from our ancestors in order to be a benefit to the Philippines. I'm inviting you to watch Chinoy TV Presents Chinese by Blood, Filipino by Heart. The modern Chinoy. Where are you from? I said, I'm from the Philippines. But how come you speak Chinese? So there's always that mm, ambiguity. Are you really Filipino or are you Chinese? I've been asking questions all my life like, am I Filipino enough or am I Chinese enough? And then my uncle looks at me, you do TV? Hello, you're too singkit. So, meaning ba pag singkit, hindi ka pwede mag-TV? At that time, it was at the height of the island dispute and uh, the Chinois have been at the middle of the crossfire between the Chinese and the Filipinos. So because of that, we decided to address this because um, at that time, a lot of people are confused in terms of the loyalty of the Chinois here. Where does your nationalism or your patriotism lie? Does it lie with where your ancestors come from? Or does it lie with where you were born and raised? So our money legals always ask, na may grateful ba yung pamilya niyo? <laughs> Funnily enough, I have never really dated a lot of Chinese girls. They scare me. <laughs> <laughs> I really would like to grow up like a normal child. I really would like to go to the mall, watch a movie. But had it not been for this training of my parents, I would not be where I am today. We should not lose out our Asian heritage. Yun ang fear ko, yun ang worry ko is uh, it's easy to lose out our Asianness by all these overwhelming Western cultural influences. I want to be the voice that starts these uncomfortable conversations and it's high time that they happen because we have to look at who we are to understand where we come from. No matter how it is run, this is our country. It is our lupang hinirang. We are just in one country, we are in one boat. Do not say why me, just say why not me.
Chinese by blood, Filipino by heart. Hashtag One Chinoy is brought to you by Donya Maria Premium Quality Rice, our Filipino farmers' hard work and dedication in every grain. BA Securities, your trading partner in Asia Pacific. My entrepreneurial blood has always been there. As early as grade two, I remember I'm selling stickers. So I go outside of our school, buy a five peso sticker pad, and then cut it out and sell it one peso 50 cents, and I'll earn around three pesos. So talaga, the business acumen was there for me. When I was in college in La Salle, I was selling wholesale of watches and shirts. So because I was doing my business, I don't have time to type my, my research, my paper. So I hired a typist, four pesos per page. I'll do all the work, but I, I sobrang bagal ko mag-type. So that during that time, I have her type while I do my business. Hi, I'm Steve C, CEO and founder of Great Deals E-Commerce Corp. Definitely, I've never been employed. I think my first employment when I became CEO of Great Deals. Yeah, so this is my you know, social media team, traffics. But as a typical Chinoy, where our mindset is to do business talaga. Of course, we're in the new digital economy. It needs to be Googleish, in a sense. No? Most of the time, we got it from Pinterest. So like this meeting room, it's a futuristic office, while well, this one is our container-type feel na meeting rooms. As a very young kid, no, I think seven years old, six years old, every time we go to, my, to our store in Divisoria, my parents will pay me one peso to take care of the store for a day, plus merienda. No? So makita niyo naman, medyo, medyo on the healthy side ako. No? So I think th those were the culture na, Steve, we're not just gonna give you allowance. If you want to have extra money, take care of the store, pantayan mo yan, so that you'll earn. So I think those were some, up to now, even I have kids, you know, I always tell them if you want to earn money, you have to bake some, you know, chocolates and then sell them. So those are the things that was imparted to me, that I now impart to my children also. More than 50% of our people are work from home, but there are some that come to the office, so these are some of our commercial team. These are uh, Yas and Cha have been with me for six years. So from a small startup, they were one of the pioneers of great deals. Yeah. Hard work and also working smart in terms of, you know, the discipline to wake up every day, go to work Monday to Saturday, I think that was instilled in us at a very young age. No? So up to now, even though at a, we're in a pandemic, I still have that habit of going to the office and working every day. No? So I think those were some of the you know, traits that was instilled in my heart. To know how to have my feet wet in terms of operation, in terms of my business. I remember we had a heated discussion with my parents. It was a Sunday morning, they asked me to go to Divisoria and open our store. And I told my parents, which I, you know, I regretted it, sabi ko, alam mo, uh, pinaaral mo ako sa Lasal para magpantay lang ng tindahan. No? Those were the, you know, heated discussion that, during that time. But I appreciated how they trained me, be at the forefront of our business, know it, so that we'll be able to have a bigger view of our business. No, sabi ko, palasal-lasal pa ako, papapuntay mo lang Divisoria. That was my, my initial rebellious you know, trait. But as I grew up, up to now, I always remember that story because right now when I start something, I always want to have an overview, 
have my feet wet, hands wet, so that I can do the job and understand what my people are going through also. Great Deal started as a startup. We started small, you know, keep on growing our cash flow until we grow it big. I think those are the lessons that I've learned as a typical Chinoy in terms of learning how to, to do the cash flow of your business so that you'll be able to grow it. It took me a while before I really seek outside investment because I know I could bootstrap it and have the right business model in building a sustainable business. In Great Deals, definitely I've done everything from checking of the platform, the online shop, to you know picking, packing, dispatching. All of this I've gone through. Not only me, but even all of my kids, because you know, as you as your business keeps on growing, you need more people. And during that time, as you grow your capabilities and capacity, you learn all of those things. And next time, you plan it better so that you'll be able to grow and scale up your business. If I don't have the the background or the training that I had as a younger Steve, I won't be able to build great deals uh, to what it is today. And so we also have a small gym, boxing gym, so called Stress and Tao. They can always have a time out, kumbaga. I think each and every individual always go through their desert experiences. We talk about desert experiences, ito yung mga hardships sa buhay, no? So before great deals, before e-commerce, you know, I was in debt for 12 years. During those time, I think I was in debt for more than 32 million pesos. I have two kids. It's very hard for the family. I always remember that I have to buy NFA, right? So that because we're budgeted during that time. For 12 years, you know, you keep on paying your debt. So there was a time that wala ka no motivation to do business. No? So because you've been paying your debt, it's been years. No, it's not just one to two years. It's you know, on your, on your six year, seven year, you, you get frustrated, you get depressed. When I had my desert experience, I was in the insurance industry because walang puhunan dun eh. No, I was selling insurance during that time, paying off my debt. But then my brother told me, ah yeah, why not go back into business? No? So I went back to business selling cell phone accessories. Because of, you know, the culture of the family of always doing business, trying to find opportunity, I went back to doing business, sold my insurance agency during that time, and with that, with that capital, I was able to start my importation business of cell phone accessories. And then, after a few years, I found the opportunity in the online space, in the e-commerce space. Even though I was down and out, you know, I didn't lose hope. I was hopeful that, you know, one day I'll be able to come back and become bigger and better. Because of those adversity or yung mga challenges that came into my life, once the opportunity came, parang I was prepared to have that kind of an adversity in order for me to be able to grow great deals. For me, great deals is my promised land. E-commerce is my promised land. Yeah, so minsan na stress ka, galit ka sa kausap mo. You can always ano, uh, distress yourself. We have a small boxing gym na pwede mong <laughs> I always remember this ano, scenario. When the first time I was able to raise 12 million dollars, I went home and then I I told my dad and he said, "Anak, yes dad, sabi niya, congratulations." And he shook my hand. And then he said, Alamo, I don't understand what your business is. Eh. <laughs> so definitely I have to explain to him, but up to now, it's been years, up to now, he really doesn't understand my business model still. What does great deals really do? So to make it simple, no, we're an e-distributor and an online retailer rolled into one. So if you look at our business, it's like we're supplying goods. Kung offline ka, you go to the different department stores or mo what we call modern trade. Sa amin naman, our channel partners are Lazada, Shopee, Zalora, Grab, Food Panda. No? So we distribute goods in those channels. And then, we're also the ones setting up shops inside the platforms. So we're also the retailer. 
No? So if you buy Nestle, Unilever, uh, Abbott, San Miguel, in Lazada and Shopee, technically you're buying from us. So we handle the end-to-end -end, from digital content, from online shop creation to data analytics, business intelligence, warehousing, fulfillment, and dispatch. We take care of the end-to-end -end solution. So yun yung pinaka main business ko. Parang ano kami, brands and retailers outsource their e-commerce channels to great deals. Because we have economies of scales, we can do it better. Because as you know, e-commerce is quite a new industry. So even as we speak, best practices are being made. The knowledge that is needed in running e-commerce is yun yung pinaka puhunan for us to be able to grow our business and scale it up. My daughter, Hello. my eldest daughter. I really admire how he finds time to spend time with us despite his busy schedule. Ano lagi niyang reminder siya? Um, to, ano, not to fear, don't fear, ano, don't be afraid to test um, new waters. We're already living in a what we call shared economy, you know. So, personally, great deals, we're not building an empire anymore. We're developing our ecosystem. So everything, everyone, we're looking at them as someone that can help build the ecosystem rather than a competitor. As a Chinoy, we have an advantage because we're business-minded. And when there's a disruption in the economy, like digitalization of the Philippines, there will be a lot of opportunities for us. And I could see most Filipino Chinois would be the one spearheading a lot of new business ideas because you have the appetite to start a business, you know. So I think you, yun yung isang core values that we have as a Chinoy that will help us in this new economy, in, this, in the digitalization of the Philippines. Chinese by blood, Filipino by heart. Hashtag One Chinoy is brought to you by Progressive Laboratories, SM Supermalls, Waters Philippines, Evergreen Cereal, AgriPro, Premier Nutrition Incorporated, Global Diesel and GU Engineering, H&E Manufacturing Corporation, Veco Paper Corporation, Nation Paper Products and Printing Corporation, Ford Tractor Philippines, your long-term agriculture partner, Japan Parts Trading Center, Pinturado Seliado Protectado Sigurado, AquaGuard Elastomeric Waterproofing Paint, Chua Bang Tang, Alejandro Ko, Jimmy C, Nung Family, Enrique Chua, Chan Kwan, Wu Chongchen, Li Pue Chin. Chinese by blood, Filipino by heart. The inflection point of e-commerce really happened during last year's pandemic. It just only accelerated what we know that's coming. It's even harder during the pandemic because there's a lot of restriction. But I think it's the resiliency of our people to be able to work, have the right mindset to grow the business even in spite of the pandemic, what sets us apart as a company. Of course, if you're not prepared, your people are not prepared, even though there's a lot of demand, you won't be able to uh, handle it because you were not set up the right way. Meron ka na bang natututunan? Ha? Oh, yeah. Na. <laughs> Typically for a typical business, especially run by Chinois, in, in, very important is your name, di ba? Bawal pumutok ang cheque at all costs because that's the puhunan mo, no? So, even with great deals, that's, that's my mindset. Always take care of your cash flow, take care of your credit. As we are in the modern digital age, we need to be more innovative in, in terms of our business model. I've learned when I went to China, saw the opportunity there and came back, it's what we call the shared economy. So even for our company, we offer stock options to our employees so that they will become part owners and they will have ownership of the company. Chinese proverb pa nga eh, 
when wealth is scattered, people gather. And I think we're just looking at the timeless principle that, you know, that's why we offer stock options because of that principle. I think yun yung mga things that I apply in my business so, so that we'll be able to grow. Another principle that I like to share is the bamboo tree principle. Typically, a mindset, when you plant a mango seed, you'll get a mango plant and it grows in just one day. Diba? Sampagita, a week, you'll see the bloom. But for a bamboo, you plant a bamboo tree, it takes you four, five years. Then after, in just a span of three weeks, it's growing so high to up to, up to 100 feet. What's, what's the principle behind it? In terms of business, we need to be patient. Hindi yung nagmamadali kumita kung hindi. Let's build the roots so that it grows faster. We have the right foundation. So those are the things that I also applied in great deals so that I'll be able to grow my company not as a mango tree or as a pagita, but a bamboo tree. That's why in just a span of a few years, big lang boom, because we are able to scale. Before, ang business lang ng tao, it's people and process. Now, we, all, we already have people, process, and tech. That's why we added the tech side so that we'll be able to scale up our business. Well, diba, typical Chinese hardware. Yan yung, yan yung kauna unang. That's the business that most Filipino Chinese has. And if if your eldest, if your father is into textile, all of you are into textile competing with each other. Diba? Makakatabi pang tindahan. That's the typical Chinese core values. No? So don't worry, in our family, uh, I'm the eldest. I have four other siblings that are also in the e-commerce space. But we don't, you know, we don't fight. Kaya nga sabi ko, we need to have a shared e ecosystem. So, iba ang target market namin so that we don't compete but we grow the ecosystem. Being brave is not just for yourself but for others. No, that's how I view bravery, you know. So, for example, last year, when the pandemic hit, everybody was fearful of their health. But then, I think I always remember this. I created a war room. Group chat lang yun, a Viber brought all of my core, lead, core people and then communicated there what we need to do as a company to survive this pandemic. No? But the mindset that we, we instill to our people is we are frontliners. If people are not able to buy online and full, get their products online, they need to go outside and be in health risk. So sabi ko, we are frontliners. We need to open. So last year, we didn't close, not even a single day. We're always open. Because sa abiko, we are frontliners for, for that our Filipino, our kababayan will be able to receive their goods, the essential goods that are needed in their day-to-day -day life. And the outcome is your company grew because you have the heart for the Filipino, the heart of a Pinoy, the malasakit. I'm thankful and grateful on how my parents brought me up. The culture, the values of a Chinoy, I think uh, I'm going to pass it on. And if you would ask me, I would prefer for them to have the same culture of what I have grown, grown up with. A little more balance. Because the problem with us, you know, especially for a Chinoy family, is everything is just all about quote-unquote money. But we need to change on how we can make, make a difference. How can we impact our generation of what are businesses that we can do to be able to help our generation? That's the modern Chinoy. You're doing a business with a purpose, with a social component to it. And I think yung yung magugro na negosyo. It's not just all about money anymore. In our values, we always honor our parents. That's why it's very hard to, to go out of the family business, I understand, because you want, we want to honor your parents. No? So I would say you're always blessed if you have the blessing of your parents. So if, you're, if you want to do something as a modern Chinoy, communicate with your parents properly so that you'll have that blessing and then you can grow, pursue your passion the right way. I think the modern Chinoy are digital savvy, you know, Chinois that are willing to take bigger risks, not just you know being part of the family business, but being innovative, looking at startup, at tech, to be able to, to pursue a digitalized economy. I think that's the modern Chinoy for me.
for more information about today's episode, visit www.chinoy.tv. And subscribe to our YouTube channel for full episodes of Chinese by Blood, Filipino by Heart. Chinese by Blood, Filipino by Heart. Hashtag One Chinoy is brought to you by Canis Prime Adult Dog Food. Feed them with love. Waters Philippines. PG Flex Linoleum and Maruyama Tarpaulin. Evergreen Cereal. AgriPro. Premier Nutrition Incorporated, Global Diesel and GU Engineering, H&E Manufacturing Corporation, Veco Paper Corporation, Nation Paper Products and Printing Corporation, Ford Tractor Philippines, your long-term agriculture partner, Pinturado Seliado Protectado Sigurado, AquaGuard Elastomeric Waterproofing Paint. Chua Beng Tang Alejandro Ko Jimmy C Nung Family George Cham William Goshako My grandfather um, migrated here in the Philippines around 1950s to the 60s, and he then uh, went to Basilan. And from there, my father was born. My father was then um, transferred to Bohol, and he started his college days there. And then that's where he met my mom. And then they went to Manila, and they got married, and I was born here in Manila. Since I was young, around eight years old, I was able to be like um, exposed to business already. Um, my father was also like um, bringing or even tagging me along. And my mother used to have a, a, a convenience store, uh, a typical Sarah Sarah store. And from there, I was able to learn how to do the inventories and everything, everything about business. While we were traveling with my business partners in Japan, uh, I was already like thinking of what could be the good business. And while walking through the streets of Shinjuku, I saw this very small laundry cafe shop. And then from there, I thought of like opening it up in the Philippines. Um, I already envisioned something that I think the technology will be able to uplift or bring out the current, the businesses uh, into a far better uh, fast paced world. Once the pandemic hit, it really like helped us a lot especially with the food deliveries uh, for our cafe and also the online appointment system for our, our laundry. When we tried to shift into the smart locker technology, we wanted to find someone who has this very strong internet services like Globe's um, wireless uh, 5G and 4G. By using this um, uh, same technology, uh, incorporated with our smart locker system because our smart lockers needs connectivity. We were able to deploy and saturate a lot of smart lockers here already in Manila and soon we'll be deploying thousands of lockers and with that we really need the help of Globe Business in expanding this one. It's better to accept the changes, adopt to the changes and don't be afraid of what's gonna happen in the future. Always remember that you can't see the future, but you can change what is on the present. Hi, I'm Elsid Lau, CEO of Lagrafe Group. Through the changing times, tuloy tayo, SMEs. Chinese by blood, Filipino by heart. I think bravery for me is acknowledging both your weaknesses and strengths and making the most out of them and at the same time wanting 
what's best and beyond for you. I don't think bravery is about not feeling fear at all. I think that a reasonable amount of fear is healthy because it also helps us in understanding the best way that we can move forward with anything. Bravery is essential also for Chinese culture. In fact, built in in Chinese culture also is the concept of risk taking. The good ones become the best entrepreneurs. They risk a lot, they bet a lot, they build a big factory where they're starting. The Chinese word for crisis is, uh, in Mandarin, it's called Wei Ji. Wei Ji, Wei from the word Wei Xian, meaning danger. Ji from the phrase Ji Hui, or opportunity. You combine danger, opportunity, it's crisis. So built in the older generation, people who have studied Chinese language and culture more than us younger generation. Now every time there's a crisis like the global pandemic, the lockdown of the entire economy, the many people getting sick and dying worldwide. That's horrible danger, but built in in every Chinese, with the Chinese culture, there is opportunity. So you have to be courageous, you have to be resourceful in looking for opportunities. Developing your adversity quotient is important. You know, the problem with a typical Chinese, Filipino, or Chinoy is, you know, you grew up in a very safe environment made by your parents. Then you don't understand how real world works. That's why it's important to have the same value of, you know, even though we've, you know, you've lived a more comfortable life than our parents has, Important is to know, go down deep, have our hands and feet wet into our business so that we know how to grow it bigger. Even though we're blessed because of what of our parents' hard work, we can grow it further, have more ambition in terms of you know digitalizing your business, your traditional business to a, to a new digital economy would be the next step for a modern Chinoy to take on that challenge, to have their businesses digitalized. Chinese by blood, Filipino by heart. Hashtag One Chinoy was brought to you by Doña Maria Premium Quality Rice, our Filipino farmers' hard work and dedication in every grain. BA Securities, your trading partner in Asia Pacific. Chinoy TV would like to thank. So I don't exactly blame people when they're against um, their children taking culinary arts. But I think now it's changed. A lot of Chinois are into the food business. I have no doubt that growing up Chinoy helped me get to where I am today. I love working with food. I love writing about food. I think about food when I'm eating food. The reason why is that food is the great equalizer.